computer. Okay, hi everybody, how you doing? We're uh, streaming and we're recording it and uh, we got, uh, we need people to give us, oh, there are so many people in the waiting room. I can't believe it. It's uh, okay, admit all. Here we go. Watch this, folks. Look at that. There's Rick. There's Charlie. There's Andrew. There's, uh, I think that's, who is that? That's Jeff. It's got to be Jeff. And there's uh, Brian Neary. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good to see you. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, Rick. Hi, Ben. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it is, um, how many weeks have we been uh, going through this coronavirus uh, since uh, February? March. February. March? <laughs> March. March. Yes, it's March. Beginning of it. Trump, Trump knew in January. But yeah. I knew in December. You, you knew in December. <laughs> oh, yeah, here comes Len, too. Let's admit him. Wow, everybody just jumping right in today. Oh, yeah. Let's be off. Um, first of all, I just have some news. Uh, I How many here know when I say the name Will Durst who I'm talking about? Of course. Yeah. Uh, as you know, Will had a stroke a year ago. And I have not talked to Will in that time. And Debbie said that I could call him uh, using Facebook. And so I did it about an hour ago and there he was. And we talked for about a half hour and, uh, you know, he's got, um, he's got a, you know, he's not, he's, he's not walking yet, <laughs> you know, but he's funny and his speaking is fine. <laughs> his speech is fine. So, uh, you know, that was, that was good. Here. Huh? Yeah. Um, so, uh, what was the joke he told me? Uh, so what will you have? Uh, oh, I have the steak and potatoes. And what about the vegetable? And he says, uh, well, he's not eating. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so so that, he, that was the big joke he, he threw on me. Uh, but it, 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 was, it was a nice conversation. So, right there. Jackie, I did something last night. Yes. I was watching um, uh, TCM, Turner Classic Movies. And I start, I got in the middle of a movie and I said, who is this actress? Because it was a silent film. The B. Lilly movie? Yes. She was wonderful. Yeah, Exit Smiling. Yeah, yeah. One of only six movies she ever made. And one was never released. Right. Right. Are you listening? 1930. B. Lilly was was born in Canada. Parents or mother moved her to England, where she became a major star on the stage and musicals and so on. The London, I guess, West End. And then she came to the United States and she became but, a, just. But she a, also married a lord. She, she was known as Lady lord. Peel. Yes, Lord Peel. Yes. And uh, then he died. And, uh, but she, he, he would think she got left with a lot of money. She got left with a lot of debts. Yeah. So she kept performing. But she came to the United States in 1926 and made this movie called Exit Smiling. That is a very funny film. Yeah, and it's probably a watch TCM right now, I would guess. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, uh, if you get watch TCM, <laughs> the app, uh, it's, it's, it's there, it'll be there for about the next 10 days. I just, I was amazed. I had to look it up. I went, it's B. Lily. My parents loved B. Lily. Yeah. Mm. Big Broadway star, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But most people will never remember her because she wasn't in the movies. Hmm. He made a few movies, but yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. The most famous one I think that she was in, oddly enough, was towards the end of her life, which was um, Thoroughly Modern Millie. Right in which he played the landlady. Like the villain in the movie, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. She had a funny face. And her comedy, in a silent comedy, was different than anybody else's because it was very subtle. It was all in the face. You know, I mean, it was just, I just, I fell in love with her. And I'm st I, I went back and started watching um, the film today. And I'm, I'm just amazed by it. And the thing that, suddenly hit me was 
you know, here it is. How many years later? 1926? Uh, 26, 27. Yeah, I think 26. I think it was listed as 26. And, and that's how many years ago? That's, that's 94. 94. And, and I am watching this thing with a woman who's long dead, and yet she's immortal because I'm sitting there laughing at her. What a wonderful legacy to have. You know? Well, it's like the Marion Davies film, Show People, or the Patsy. Oh, where, Show People, yeah. Where you think, you know, because of Citizen Kane, she was that, you know, Susan Peters. Yeah. But she was a great actress. Yeah. What is that buzzing noise? Anybody hear that? Yeah, I hear it. I don't know, I hear it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's from. Let me, let me see here. If we mute somebody, one of the somebody is it's a noise coming from somebody. Well, Jeff's off, Ryan's off, Len's off. Well, wait a minute, it was one of you. Turn yourself on, Jeff. Let's see. No, it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't you, Brian. It was me last time. Was it you last time? Yeah, no. it could it could be something that you just got on. Yeah. No, the the fan the fan's on on the computer maybe that's it. Oh, I see. Okay. I'll, I'll stay muted unless I have something. Maybe to say. you had chili for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well. So now, how's everybody? Are we having another colonoscopy today, or where is she? What? Who? Another one. Great, <laughs> Marjorie. Had so much fun last time. She's Marjorie crazy. already had her colonoscopy. I know, but where is she? Oh, where is she? Marjorie. She had so much fun, she went for another one. Yeah, she's not, even, she's not calling. Wow. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I can just, you know, I can do this. See, I can go. <laughs> Marjorie? Marjorie? Are you going to join us? Are you going to join the show? Are you going to join the show? Like you. Married couple. <laughs> I love behind the scenes stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe Tennis is on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, you're doing hey, Rick, the show? Do you have any help? Okay. Yep. Okay, you're doing the show? All right. Do you have any 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 memories of uh, Eddie matter. Van Halen? Doesn't I matter. see a lot of a lot of clips from him being on um, Letterman show. Of who? Uh, Eddie, Eddie Van, Halen. Van Halen. He was only on I think twice. Mm -hmm. But what I always remember, and I think I might have mentioned this before, maybe last week, we were doing the show in California, and I was going up to my temporary office, and he and Valerie Bertinelli are just sitting on the staircase holding hands. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. It was, yeah. no, it's very yeah. sweet. Yeah. You know, you, you know, that kind of thing where you walk by and go, oh, it's Eddie Van Halen and Valerie Bertinelli. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you keep walking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh boy! I don't know if you've heard, but she was rather attractive. Oh my God! She was were wondering. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was. Still is. Yeah. 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 Uh, and they were—they supposedly were still friends to the end. Oh, and she, I think she was there as he was passing away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. She posted a lot of pictures in the last week or so of them when they were together. Very sweet stuff. Said some really sweet stuff. I absolutely love her. I'm going to take you guys with me here for a second and show you something I have on my wall in my office that I absolutely love. Let's see if you can see this or not. Let me see here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Who is that? It says, to Len, welcome to the 50 Club. When I turned 50, my girlfriend at the time decided to write to Valerie and have her send me a, a signed <laughs> picture. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, she's a hottie. I always liked her. Yeah. I think she's yeah. my hall pass. Yeah, in the <laughs> problems, but they came out of it. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you know, um, you know what? I'll tell you something. There's something re really wonderful about having been married to somebody. And then you, you kind of separate, when you separate, it's, there's a certain bitterness that always occurs, you know, and then time passes. And you start realizing that you liked each other then. Why shouldn't you be liking each other now? And he had a lot of drugs and drinking issues back at that time, too. Yeah. So. Well, uh, it's like 
It's like you and Ronnie. Well, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, and it's like Ronnie and I. I mean, uh, I guess the thing I'm happiest for in my life in that respect is that I got to know her again, you know, and that Mm -hmm. we are still friends to this day. Um, And, you know, just because just because you're not married to each other any longer doesn't mean that you can't, you know, be, uh, be friends. Like for instance, one day I'll be friends with Marjorie. (laughs) I'm sure she'd appreciate it. I missed it. What did you say? (laughs) Says he loves you very much. We were sworn to silence. Sorry. Actually, we were talking about we were talking about the fact that people, when they're when they're married and then they get divorced, usually there's a lot of animosity when the divorce takes place. But if 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 they're smart people, eventually they'll be friends again, because there was a reason they were, there the was a reason. Few years. Well, there was a reason why they were friends in the first place. Right. You know, and that's what happened with Ronnie and I. You know, Ronnie and I didn't talk to each other for years. You know. And then I, I, one day I decided I'd been a terrible husband. So I wrote her and I just said, I just want to apologize for being a shit as, of a husband. And that started the friendship again. Good. You know, and now we're friends. You know, so, um, but. Uh, well, when are you writing a letter to Marjorie? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never, I've never cheated on Marjorie. <laughs> he's, he's too old. <laughs> Chris Rock says. Chris Rock said, "You're only as faithful as your options." He doesn't even have a car. You get you get to that certain age where Viagra only helps you to keep from peeing in your shoes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah, well, I'm I'm dropping the Cialis. I take five milligrams of Cialis every day because it uh, supposedly it helps with the urinating right but uh, it also helps with something else but i find it's not that important anymore <laughs> and and it costs, it, costs too, it costs too much money and now that i'm going to be taking uh, uh insurance uh for my uh for my uh, uh what do you call it? prescription Medicare. that i don't want to go into that hole that donut they have donut hole. Mm-hmm. so if i don't take that drug, which is the most expensive drug I take, uh, because it's billed at the price that it normally is, which is like, I don't know, 300, 400 a month or something, I will, won't fall into the donut hole. No. So I don't need to fall into the donut hole. And if All I right. don't have an erection be- without falling into it, so be it. <laughs> you know. All I heard was Cialis and donut hole. I- <laughs> 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 well, it helps, with, it helps you with I the donut hole. I got a letter from Medicare this week. What? Apparently, it makes so much money, my A and B will be three hundred and fifty dollars a month. It's like, then why do I need this? Wait a minute. What? What, what will be three hundred dollars a month? My Medicare A and B. Yeah. Will be three hundred and fifty dollars a month. Why is it more than the rest of us? Yeah. Are you on oh. Social Security yet? No. Oh, oh, that's why. Oh, oh that's, that's why. Okay. Yeah. Another youngster. <laughs> no, I just don't need the Social Security, but it's like, you know, we looked at your tax returns and you make some, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's what your copay will be for each month. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Then why don't I just keep what I've got already? No, wait a minute. Are you talking about a copay for a, a supplemental plan? No, well, are you talking A&B. about the actual Medicare? A and B will be three fifty a month. God, I only pay some. They only pay something like a hundred and ten or something. Well, you don't again. Or something, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. I got the letter the other day. Well, you're going to have to stop earning all that money from ta- from uh, stocks. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm I, sure there's. Well, some... let Mr. Trump bankrupt me. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump makes a hundred million dollars a year and pays seven hundred dollars yeah you know, i went to his barber and now i'm broke <laughs> what? i went so, to his barber and i'm broke oh yes yeah, how much did he say pay 70 grand 
so every year? Yeah. I didn't have the friends and family discount. It cost me 80. <laughs> <laughs> the only vendor he paid. Oh, man, well, man. we know that he paid him or the government pay him, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's amazing. I, uh, <laughs> oh boy. Um, so anyway, how are you all doing in your various areas? Uh, I know Shecky is in Queens and that's been a hot spot, right? Not that I've noticed, but I don't leave the house. So what do I know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I told you I'm making my first trip on the subway on Thursday to get a dental cleaning. Oh, really? You're, gonna take the, you're not going to drive in or anything like that? You take the subway. I found, I told you, when I went out for dinner in Manhattan for the first time, my friend Randy, she was driving, and people were riding bicycles and motorcycles and stuff like crazy. Yes. With headphones yeah. on and stuff that I don't want to drive among these people. Right. No, oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. I'd rather get on the F train and read my book and wear my mask. They, and... they say it's clean down there. They say that it's not dangerous. You no, know. I'm not scared about doing that. So, As long as you wear your mask, you're in pretty good shape. And everybody else has to wear a mask on the train. Otherwise, they get fined $50. Nobody gets yeah, But fun. there's nobody there to enforce it. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah, it's a shame you took such good care of your teeth, because otherwise you could just FedEx them in for a cleaning. <laughs> I haven't seen that before. They need the money. You know what that? How that works? <laughs> I take I take a lift down to my subway uh, to my uh, uh, to my doctor's, and then I take a bus back. Hmm. Uh, well, at that hour, it's still empty. The bus is only three or four people. Yeah, I got on the bus. I got on the bus about a week ago, and I uh, got on it at uh, you know wherever it stops. Uh, and I got on, and there was one other person on the bus who got off at 57th, and between 57th and about 110th Street, there was nobody on the bus but me. Hmm. I was the only one. So that's I decided to, to give myself gas. COVID. What? <laughs> that's a good way to save gas. I mean, that's efficient, right? One guy for, for 40 blocks. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I also thought I'm coming in Thursday, and then after that, it's like, I guess I'm just going to go home. There's nothing to do in Midtown. Well, I have to go down for a hearing test on what? To, Friday. Friday? God, I thought at it was noon. months before. Noon. At to, noon. Yeah. Uh, because I, I'm, I've am i been lightheaded lately. And, and his balance is my, off. My balance is off. I close my eyes and I stand up. I wobble. You wobble. And mm. my doctor mm. said, when we went to him for my checkup, he said, that's... Uh, um, Hearing. Hearing. It's ears. <laughs> so I got to go to an ear doctor and figure out what we do about. ENT doctor. Ears, nose, and throat. Well, all I care about is the E. Okay. That's true, but I'm not going to them for the N and the T. So do I get a, th uh, do I only pay a third? No. Oh. He'll check them all out. Yeah. Ear, nose, and throat. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have no problem with the, uh, let's see. Nose, fine. Throat, fine. Ears? What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Anybody here have hearing problems that way? Do they have balance problems? How about you, Jeff? You should be having some. Why do you say that? Because like, he's an old fart like me. He's a, he's a young <laughs> kid compared to me, but he's an old fart like me. Yes. I, I passed that. Yeah. 75 plus. I yes. was reading about the president. Mm -hmm. And his wife, not the president, present wife, but uh, the old wives. Do you know that that's on TV now? All the vice president, all the president's wives. Oh, you yes. Mean, Iv Iv Ivana? No, the first wife. Ivana. Yeah. Well, this Ivana. one, that, that was Ivana. what? Maple, Smarl. The guy from uh, California. Um, who was Reagan? Reagan. Reagan. Yeah, Reagan. Reagan, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah his wife. they did, they did, uh, they did. It's all about her. Nancy Reagan. Yeah. And they did one on Michelle. We haven't seen it. Yeah, I have them. I have both of them. The one on so, Netflix and Michelle's good. So when he was the last, pre when he was president, I think he, he retired, so to speak. Well, they, it's not called retiring. It's calling having served your final term. That's right. <laughs> 
or not being reelected in some case. <laughs> well, anyway, he was 72 and everybody was complaining. About How old he was. Old he so was. Old. Yes. Yeah. And look okay. at these two. How old was he when he when he left off? He died about two years after. No, no, he died. It was no, Reagan was around for years after. Yeah. He just didn't know he was here. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't know he was there. Yeah. His wife ran the country. Well, the country. Ran the country. In, his, in his last term, she was running the country. Yes, yeah. she was. Yeah, Reagan died in 2004. Yeah. Died in 2004, and he was president until what? 2002? 88. 88. Yeah, so he lived quite a bit after the presidency. Um, but that's yeah. also what happened. You know, Woodrow Wilson's wife was running the White House. That's back right. In if Trump doesn't get reelected, he's moving out of the country. I don't know if you read yeah, that. Oops. I heard that. Hey, it was a flip, a flip <laughs> comment. Oh, he's, yeah, he's making a joke. He's such an <laughs> egotistical prick. Governor of Wisconsin, of Michigan. Oh, he's <laughs> making a joke. <laughs> So he's going to move out of Russia if he doesn't win. Well, everybody was thinking about voting for Biden. This is a bonus. Yeah. No, but he said he said uh, that he's if he were to lose to the worst candidate ever to run to president, he'd leave the country. He he's going to have to fight all those lawsuits, and he's going to think he can win, so he'll stick around to fight until they lock him up. Can you imagine how much help he's going to have packing? <laughs> No, he's going to go to a country that doesn't have a extradition clause. And that was I was joking about that 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 his computer got hacked when he dropped it off to get repaired in a city that he doesn't live in, and they saw his browser history was all about countries that don't have extradition. <laughs> <laughs> this Biden Biden son computer thing is the is the worst stupid hoax in the history of trying to get somebody. And look, and look who's doing it. It's um Rudy Giuliani and Steve Bannon. <laughs> you hear the best part about it. The mm -hmm. repair guy. Yeah, I trust the computer them. repair guy. Blind. 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 Saw the porn. Blind. <laughs> so number one, how did he see these pictures? How did yeah. he see these emails? And by the way, while we're at it, you're blind. How do you repair a computer? A guy I know in Wisconsin told me he was going to the rally that just happened. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I saw the Who on their farewell tour, too. <laughs> well, was Mike Love there? Who was huh? uh, who, uh, there are only two presidents, I think, in my lifetime who didn't get reelected. One was Bush. George and Carter, 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 Carter. And Carter. Every other president has gotten two terms. Yeah. So well, you got to be pretty damn Nixon. terrible to not get really. a second term. Even Nixon got a second term. Exactly. Didn't last, but... Exactly. So let's just keep you know. our fingers crossed. Yeah, we're, we're, keeping our, we're keeping our fingers crossed, but I, I just, you know, I see all the statistics and everything. I mean, this Alex, time... please don't get confident. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll talk about where I, when I got confident after the election. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I mean, the fact is that, you know, we learned last time what went wrong. Yeah. And somebody also mentioned that it's interesting. I hate to talk about Trump on this show because we usually have a better time than that. Well, let's move on then. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Next subject. But somebody brought this up, and it's true. that The trouble Trump has now is before he was running as an outsider. Right. Okay. Now he's running as the insider. Yeah, look what he's done. Look at the health care he provided us. Yeah, I love hey, that health care plan. Hey, it's he's coming. The outsider, the outsider topic, so he keeps saying, I will do this, I will do this. Well, you said that. You know, three and a half years ago, and he didn't do any of that stuff. Exactly. Well, you know, the walls about many, apparently. By the way, interesting, I, I was talking to Will Durs. You know, I've had this problem with my health insurance because my union has decided to become total and utter assholes, okay? And they've done away with the insurance that we were taking and now say, hey, well, but we're letting you go to this company via benefits and they'll tell you how to get insurance. Blah, 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 blah. And, and they'll do it's it. It's going to cost you. me four times what it's costing us now, although her oh. company is paying for it for the time being. And um, I, I, you know, I was talking to Will. I said, so how are you taking care of this? He said, well, I've got Medicare and then I've got the supplemental from SAG after. And I said, How's that going? He says, I know we're looking for new. <laughs> Debbie's out looking for new insurance now. 
I mean, here's a guy in the hospital, half paralyzed from a stroke, and my union is going, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, how about that 105-year-old doc, uh, actor? Oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, what's his name? The guy name? was in Saboteur. Uh, yeah, Norman, uh, Lloyd, maybe. Uh, uh, Norman Lloyd. Norman Lloyd. Norman Lloyd. The guy is 105 years old. He's the guy that fell off the uh, Statue of Liberty Statue of in Liberty. Saboteur. Mm -hmm. uh, he's 105 years old. He's losing his insurance because he takes a pension. And if you're taking a pension, you can't... Um, uh, you can't log on, get something else. And so he, you're, you're not, oh, you're, he's not able to, you could take your pensions and say, that's part of what I made this year. But under the new rules, you can't. So he can't say he made enough money to get the regular insurance from after it. Or that's staff. terrible. Yeah. So that's Norman terrible. Lloyd, this, the, known as the oldest actor in, Alive. in, in SAG. Uh, you can't get can't get insurance. Yeah, terrible. This is terrible. We have to, we have to get going. She wanted to say hello, goodbye. So one one thirty every Monday. Her teacher has a couple one on one, so she's on Monday at one thirty. So oh, that's cute. That's yeah. adorable. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say hello to everybody? Hey, hi. Doing? How you doing? Hello. <laughs> okay, now she's mellowed out. Today. No, wait, wait a minute. Shy. At night, at night, she's like a character. But yeah. every yeah, day she's yeah. like this. Yeah. She's going look, to look, she's putting Alex. the hair over one eye. She's getting that <laughs> look. Oh, well, she's brought okay. away. <laughs> say okay. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Bye. Look at that, not me. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye, 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 Brian. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> Don't hit your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> she's adorable. She's so cute. She's adorable. Yeah. Um. But, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I just, I don't understand this country, why we can't come up with a health care plan. You know, I mean, what's the... Because the politicians get it for free, so they don't care. Well, and they get it for their life. And their lifetime. The rest of their life. And it's a better policy than what it's, normal... It's, it's more basic than that. The insurance companies have massive lobby dollars to get yep. these guys elected. And as long as long as the insurance industry, the the I don't want to pay for, that, that only makes money if they say no, is in power with their lobbyists, they're, we're never going to have health insurance that works. You're right. It, yeah. it, it, it has. It's always always. But, it's not that the senators get their free health. That's part of the game that the insurance companies give them. Uh, to bribe them to vote to bribe them. us from having decent health insurance. Yeah. But, but none of the other no other countries seem to be having this problem. That's you because know? we we're not a capitalist country. We're we're oh. corporatists. And and here's the thing: you get <laughs> Medicare, right? Good deal. But it only pays eighty percent. What's that about? They can't pay a hundred percent. What? We, well, we don't want people to get too used to living on the dole. Yeah. You know? Well, you're not supposed to use that special word. Socials. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, you mean like when you call the police? Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> or when you call the fire department or have your yeah. trash picked up? Those guys too. Yeah, it was horrible. And when when we sent an army to war, those damn socialists. Yeah. Using our, using our money to fight other countries, those bastards. What is it? Uh, uh, you know, the, the social thing we do with uh, with like. Uh, 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 That's a cotillion. Huh. <laughs> That's the social event. <laughs> yeah, no, but <laughs> well, for instance, I don't social distance. I capitalistic distance. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and, and, well, now it's fascist distancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I hate I hate the fact that that our healthcare is tied to our jobs. Yeah. You know, yes. If you, if you change jobs, then you got to change healthcare. Do you know why that is? Back, back in the day, you know, everybody stayed at the same company for forty years yeah. or whatever and retired. If they preach, we don't want we don't want uh, yeah, we don't want uh, the, the the nanny state. So they turned okay. it over to the businesses, and the reason they turned it over to the businesses is they thought it would help with employee retention. Yeah, you'd be too afraid to go somewhere else. You'd be too afraid to open a compet to become a competitor, because while you're doing it, you can't you can't afford the health insurance. Yeah. yeah. All of that was. Or let's, all of that say, was let's, let's say you just lose your job. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay, this. then what do you do? 
You're fine. <laughs> you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, you're just fucked. Not only do you have to worry about finding a job, you got to make sure you don't trip and fall and you don't get a virus or. Yeah, and then well, you, you know, go. When, home, I, was, when I was younger, home. I guess I never thought about medical insurance. You know, it, it, okay, I, I go to a job. In those days, you go to a job and they go, and by the way, one of the perks of working for us is you get free medical insurance. Oh, that's nice. So I never ever worried about medical insurance. Yes. And, and I never cared mm -hmm. about whether I paid for it or whatever. You know, it was free. Uh, then I went into just working for myself, being self-employed. All right. And that went on for about 20 years. When I came out the other side, suddenly I saw, well, you, well, you got medical insurance at this job. Oh, good. They say, it will cost you 300 a month. What? Well, we're paying 900 a month. Yeah, well, that's cheap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my health insurance for me and the wife is $1,400 a month. Yeah. Your that's what ours no, I don't, for my personal, I don't, I don't have a job. I run my own company. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so, when we were when we were solo um, entrepreneurs get get killed. Yeah, I mean ours was when we were on the offices one. It was twenty one thousand a year for the two yeah, of us. Really? Yeah. And my my wife is an adjunct professor, meaning she doesn't get paid worth crap and doesn't qualify for the benefits there. The the college the college eighty percent of the teaching staff are adjunct. Wow. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah. It is terrible. You yeah, know, I mean, uh, but why can't we get this right? Why can't we just say, hey, look, everybody, we take care of you. Get sick, go to the hospital. We won't send you a bill. Got it would actually be oh. cheaper to do it that way. Yes. Go, go to the hospital without health insurance and see how much it costs. Right. Oh, oh, oh look. Oh, my, my God, yes. Uh, okay. You ready for this? I, I talked to Will. Will had to be in ICU for three months. How much do you think the bill came to oh my god for 4.2 million 1.4 million dollars wow now of course that isn't what medicare paid you know, right but whatever. still but if you didn't have insurance and that happened to you you would get a bill for 1.4 million dollars and no and ability to negotiate because you don't have an insurance company right there are some I, covid patients that have gotten bills that big oh bigger yeah I, I had a, I, I had a friend that mm -hmm. went into the hospital, you know, five, six, seven years ago. She had uh, she was in for three or four days. It was you know forty, fifty thousand ish dollars. Um, they sent her bills. They kept sending her bills. She didn't have a job. She didn't have any money. She ignored the bills. The bill, the uh, you know, the letters stopped coming. The calls stopped coming, and they wrote it off. So you know, the, that's what they do. Well, I mean, you get a bill for a million four. I don't think you're going to pay that. And what we do is I go to the hospital, I tell them my name's Alex Bennett. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's what and we there all you go, you're in. And they plant some seeds in your prostate. Yeah. <laughs> kind of fun, actually. They were, they were Alex Bennett. The problem is they were spaghetti squash. They're really uncomfortable. I'm still having after effects of those radioactive seeds in my ass. Every time I fart, it's a mushroom cloud. <laughs> Someone said that to me yesterday that we were we were talking about all the Zoom calls. He said these Zoom calls took all the fun out of farting in a meeting. You know what these Zoom calls did? I started back when when we started doing Gabnet. Uh, I, You're uh, using uh, Skype. Well, well, wait a minute. What I did was I wanted to find a way to take calls like I did on the radio. Yep. And uh, anytime you go to the phone company and say, how much to put in four telephone lines in here and, you know, so I can rig it up. And they would say, oh, 800, 900 a month. Huh? Then I found this thing called Skype. Yep. And I found I could have somebody call me on Skype and then, then the sound quality was good and everything. And then I said, well, wait a minute, I can actually have 10 people call me on Skype. So I then did that and started what I called the citizen panel. It wasn't that I just invented this. It, uh, I saw an opportunity and I took it. So we were doing this for, what, four years or something. When all of a sudden, here comes COVID, here comes Zoom. What I've been doing for the last four years is now commonplace. Yes. yes. You know. You know when the first Zoom call was, it was the opening of the Brady Bunch. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> yes, well, yeah, almost. We would have the Brady Bunch if two more people were to call us right now. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you see today, you know Jeffrey Tubin is, don't you? Y yeah. He, apparently he's a guy who exposes his penis on Zoom, isn't he? How does that happen? Well, you want to see? <laughs> no. <laughs> no but yes. I mean, like I always yes. joke, no, I shower before this little Monday meeting. I'm wearing clothes. How the hell are you not wearing pants? Well, I was, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be wearing pants? Nobody says you have to wear <laughs> pants because I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> but, I'm not standing up. Yeah. I just <laughs> understand how a supposedly intelligent man yeah. or woman would be doing that. But he exposed himself? Yes. Why? That's what I'm saying. See, I mean, On purpose, know, purpose, he, he forgot he wasn't wearing pants. pants. I want to say it was in the first month of the shutdown, the COVID, Schwarzenegger's son is a, a newscaster, and they backed up the camera a little bit. He was in a jacket and tie and didn't have pants on. <laughs> and just yeah, under pants. Short, but... I mean, it's just like, I don't understand this. Yeah, I don't know too many people who sit around in their house without pants on. I don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I don't. I, I usually have some underpants on. Yeah. You know, yeah, you walk around. With I have those. underpants on for days at a time because I have no reason to get dressed because I have no life. Or take a shower. <laughs> well, that's why I joke. I take a shower and I shave before we do this little four o'clock thing. So once hmm. a week, you get to once shower a week, and shave. You're fine. Well, but more you than an hour, more than once, but shave once a week. But I mean, I, I've got no no will to do all those things, like get all dressed up and everything. Oh yeah, for her benefit, I suppose, but- uh, But I'm in sweatpants and I've right? got the on. In all, in, all, in all seriousness, I commute to my office in the house every day. I get up, I have breakfast, I take a shower, get cleaned up, get dressed and commute to my office. That's so yeah. more than I do. Yeah, I don't, and I'm, I'm here from four in the morning until five, six at night every day working. Wow. So, you, so you, you're very, it, that's a good idea though. Is that you actually take it as a job? So it's a regimen. Yeah, it's a regimen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. routine every day. Yeah, yeah it works works out well. And between four and eight in the morning, usually I get enough time to do uh, all the kind of stuff I don't want to be interrupted doing. I used the Peloton a couple of times last mm -hmm. week and, sh and showered at that time. Use what? The Peloton. Oh, you did. That's right. Twice. Twice? Yeah. Good for you. As I say, if you're a journalist and you're doing a webcast, don't you put clothing on? Yeah. Yeah, granted, I joke, I'm lying in bed doing well, this. Well, uh, I always have my shorts on. Either that or sometimes I have sweats on. Depends on what time of the year it is and how cold it gets in there. Well, well now I'm down in the a sleeve shirt. You know, I've moved on to winter clothing, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I, uh, um, you know, I, I see no reason to get dressed, particularly in the morning. Would you like me to get all dressed up, Marjorie? Wait, who, who's calling me now? Is this another one? Of Not me. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Why? It's, it's Joe Biden. Hello. Hello. Thank you for choosing Visa and Mastercard services as your legal financial advisors. This is an important message regarding your existing credit card account. Oh, hold on a second, it's important. You have been qualified finally for an interest rate reduction between 0 to 5%. Oh, really? Several attempts were made to reach you. Oh. This is your final courtesy call before we are unable to lower your interest rate. Mm -hmm. So press 1 now. Oh, I don't have a button to press. <laughs> oh, my watch. Oh, well. Screw up. Anyway. Well, I still keep getting calls about my auto warranty that I don't have, and the car is 25 years old. Oh. This is call. I get calls about my auto warranty, and sometimes I'll actually stay on the line. I'll press one or do whatever you got to do when the guy comes on, and I let him go into a spiel about the auto warranty. And I said, funny you should call me about an auto warranty. Why? I said, I don't own a car. Yeah. Click. You, they don't even say it. goodbye. <laughs> if you get a chance, I just put a link in the chat mm -hmm. to some of my prank phone call recordings. Mm -hmm. This, this, don't play it on the show here, but if you get it, copy it and save it no, for later. Just, the the guy from the, the Come fake, on, play it, play a, it. A, a guy from the fake online pharmacy called me 
and I had him looking up my prescription for Damatol. <laughs> so, for Damatol? And then it gets better at the end. I don't, I don't want to break the punchline, but if you listen to it all the way to the end, it's kind of long. Yeah. Because he just wouldn't give up. The, the, the last part of it will kill you. I guarantee it. <laughs> I learned to do something once, and I, I, I continued to do it, actually, to be honest with you, because it, screen. it worked. Well, no, somebody calls you. Somebody calls you, and they're, especially if it's a woman, and she's giving you a pitch, that you then say, what are you wearing right now? <laughs> she goes, what? Hey, what are you wearing right now? She goes, are you naked? <laughs> She said, how dare you? I said, you called me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the presumption That's that good. if they call you, you still have to be nice. And I've had them actually go. I one time told a guy, listen, I don't want to get these calls anymore. Please do not call me ever again. And you know what his reply was? Fuck your mother. Yeah. <laughs> but the other one that's really fun, really fun, is you, you, if it's a dude, you start calling him ma'am. <laughs> hit on him. And you hit on him. You sound so sexy, lady. Do you have any pictures? Hey, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> those guys, because they're all from those, those countries where, you know, women are second, second class. Yeah. But to assume that it's a woman, they get pissed. And then you, when you start flirting and hitting on them, they get even worse. Yeah. <laughs> they used to call me from the they constantly wanting to fix my windows. And I thought, where are you guys? I've been waiting all day. I can't get the damn thing open. I'll tell you, I was embarrassed <laughs> once. Uh, I was getting very frustrated. I was living downtown. And I was getting very frustrated in the fact that my cable was not working right. Had not been working right for months glitching. Oh, this is when I learned how to use the internet to get my shows because I, I just, got so sick of having to try and get it using and nobody would listen to me there and uh finally i call up one time and this person answers the phone says yes can i help you and uh i said yeah i'm i'm trying to get my cable fixed yes what is the problem i said i've told you a dozen times and then finally i got frustrated and i said by the way what country are you in and he said long island <laughs> I felt a little embarrassed. I, I'm sorry. I was just wondering. I always ask what country are they from? And then I say, can I talk with your supervisor who it would be American? And then they transfer me to an American. Really? Yeah. Or one with a better accent. Oh, I've, actually, yeah. I've actually had to ask, uh, I think it was Amazon once, I had to say, would you please turn me over to an American connection? And they did. They will do that. Uh, there's an easy fix. We want to fix the job market and we want to fix our security. New mm -hmm. law. No company in the United States based here can ask an American to give personal information to someone overseas. We just opened a million, a million phone centers. Done. Go out to these rural areas where nobody's got a job. They can work from home. These depressed cities, they can work at the call center up there and yeah. you don't have to give your social security number to some guy in a mud hut. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, there are a lot of things, there's a lot of things we should be doing. It's I mean, simple. Uh, whatever happened to this so-called uh, do not call registry? Uh, yeah. I signed up for it, oh, you know, and, exactly. and and it worked for a while. Yep. But it's then still I'll, working for me. It, 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 no, no. What I, mean? I get a lot of calls that don't even ring. It goes right to my list. Well, but that's because you signed up for a service, that, you know, and I don't do that because sometimes it mistakes like my doctor for being a spam call so you know yeah the ones the ones that have mistakes they leave you a message and then you check the messages and you call well, them why back. don't we just pass some really ugly laws here well, about well, anybody who does robo calling well, right? here, here's the reason we the can't stop it because theory. the phone companies won't talk to each other because they're using they're using mimic lines if they were to verify those numbers based on where it's coming from yeah. automatically which they have the tech to do but the phone companies refuse to, to interconnect, to talk to each other, and mm -hmm. the government doesn't have the you-know-whats to make them do it. I, I told you guys a couple of weeks ago, I got a phone call from myself once. Uh, you know, came up and the thing, caller ID was me. And so I wanted to, I answered the phone to see what I wanted, and, and it, was a, it was a scam call. Isn't that called phone sturbation? <laughs> <laughs> is it well, call I, I, I don't know that the number you get on your phone is an actual working It number. isn't. It is not. It is not. It's fake. 
It's either a mimic it's real number or a fake. Can't phone. the phone companies do something to make it impossible for somebody? No, nope, because that they have kind to verify the number with the carrier that it claims to be coming from. What I don't understand is you get a call within your area code or the few around New York City, you pick it up, and they're talking in Chinese. <laughs> Yeah, I so like whatever you're selling, or, I don't understand or, it. Order the egg rolls and hang up. What were you saying, <laughs> Becky? I said she works for the Chinese. Yeah, right. It, it yeah. might have been her boss. It might have been your boss. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> it, was, it was the Chinese Trump yelling, you're fired in Chinese. <laughs> Are you tired of being, of being called the Chinese flu? You know, what? It, that that isn't working. I'm sorry. What? It's not working. It's that I work for the Chinese. No, calling it the Chinese flu. Yeah, the the kung flu. Yeah, no, I mean because yeah. I mean what? Because Trump, they had a Spanish Trump. flu. Well, I got news for you. Spanish flu really wasn't the Spanish flu. It started, started here on an army base in the United States. Huh? It was what? like Kansas City or something. It was like it's, Kansas City, yeah. It's, yeah. spoken, it's spoken for its impact. As long as he keeps saying it, he, he you can't blame him. It's the same. It's the the same as the. Uh, I just lost my thought. The, the the language of oh yeah, for you can't you can't rule from your basement. Mm -hmm. Biden hasn't been in his basement, and when he was, he was being responsible. But they keep saying in your basement, in your basement, and now they don't even have to mention him, and they say it, and you immediately think of basement, you think Biden. It's it's a psychological marketing tool. Yeah, apparently he was out somewhere this weekend when they kept saying he's in his basement. Yeah, you can't run the country. For, well, he wasn't running the country. He's not the president, jackass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, he was getting ready for a debate on Thursday. Yeah. But when it's, did he fuck that one up? Yeah, it's, it's psychological torture. It's like giving somebody a nickname they don't like, and then everybody starts calling him that. You know what you haven't heard word one from Trump on? Is the fact that he got beaten in the ratings by Biden. No, he didn't say a word. He didn't say a word. No, he did. He did. He said that if YouTube, you add in, he YouTube said the cable. In. He said what? Yeah, something like that. What did he say? It, because people didn't count how many people watched on the internet and on cable. But they did. Yeah, but that that's his argument, is that he beat them, but they didn't, the numbers that you saw. But he, he hasn't played that up, so therefore, you know. They I, say that both sides have already lawyered up for to go to court. My favorite whoever new, wins, it's gonna be a yeah. my favorite new television personality is the waver, the nodder, the bobblehead uh, in oh, back of He's a Trump. huge Trump fan. I Good couldn't man. keep my eyes off of her. I mean I kept mentioning it to Marjorie. Look at look at the woman she was going back. like this. <laughs> She's, she's, she's an undecided been, voter. How did she end up sitting right behind the man? She's not an undecided voter. She's a huge Trump. Big Trump. She's a, right. she's a Dominican, a Dominican immigrant who hates who hates allowing immigrants in the country and is out supporting and campaigning for him. And nobody can figure out how she was how they tricked the people into letting her sit behind him. Well, there's there was another him. woman sitting right behind him who was doing the same thing. And uh, they had a guy in the middle who wasn't doing anything. And they went to a commercial and they came back. He was gone and somebody else was back there going. Updates. Yeah. So, I mean. And well, now he's complaining about Fox News, whoever the moderator is Thursday. She hates me. Oh, no. Kirsten. Uh, uh, whatever. NBC. Yeah. Yeah. He's at MSNBC. Kristen, Kristen Welker. But they're on Fox yeah. News channel. Huh? What? On the Fox News channel. No, no, no. She's NBC. She's NBC. No, MSNBC. I know MSNBC. I know. No, she is NBC. She's NBC News. She yeah. has to report from time to time and do shows on MSNBC. But um, I know it's Kristen Welker because I find her the hottest woman in journalism. <laughs> she, she is hot. Am I right, Charlie? I you don't know. know. I've never seen her. You don't know who I'm talking about? No. Never seen her either. If I showed I her to you, MSNBC. put huh? a picture of her up. She is very pretty. She's By the way, that doof, very the, that doofus in the red sweater last time was a Ken Bone. He finally came out. He's voting for the Libertarian. Is he yeah. 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 Well, who cares what Ken Bone thinks? Yeah. Yeah. I he's following my strategy. All my Republican friends that hate Trump are all voting Libertarian. 
which is a beautiful thing because we can get those two parties strong. It's like middle school. You want the boy, you want the boy for your class president. You nominate three girls and one boy. You're done. <laughs> the girls split, and you get the boy. Well, you know, make, make the libertarian strong. They'll they'll be twenty percent, twenty percent. We'll be. Yeah, I don't think people voting libertarian is going to take away from the Democrats. No, but it'll take away from the Republicans. That's what the ones that can't stand Trump are voting libertarian. Yeah, because libertarians are basically, uh, you know, Republicans who are like pot. Yeah, stoner, stoner Republicans. Stoner Republicans. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I thank God, man. It's only two more weeks, and then I don't care how it ends at this point. Just get it over with. I'm so sick and tired of it all. I care. You know, I've got COVID fatigue, and I've also got election fatigue. Sure. Um, it's still fair. Fatigue and we have two direct. more weeks to go. But how much worse would it be if we didn't have COVID for the election with these, you know, two guys running around the country, you know? Oh, yeah. How <clears throat> sick are you, though, of people using COVID as an excuse for their incompetence? I mean, that's what our union said in the thing. I, I, I got on that union thing the other day to hear what they would have to say. Uh, and it was like uh, really? uh, Barry Gordon. <laughs> Remember Barry Gordon? <laughs> yes. Ed or whatever his he name. He was the whatever. president of our union for a while. The producer? It, Barry Gordon. Remember he was a kid actor? He was in A Thousand Clowns. Yeah. Uh, that was the only thing he was ever known for. Little short fellow with dark hair and whatever. And would do the Jack Benny show occasionally. Yeah. 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 And and Mazer, what's his other name? He was also president of the union. They were both there saying how wonderful this plan was. I, I don't know where they caught that one up. But um, I, I simply wrote, why do we have to use COVID as an excuse for incompetence? Hey, hey! You need to take back what you said. He was Donatello, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle voice. <laughs> okay. How dare you insult oh, that piece sorry. of crap? I'm sorry. I I lost my I lost I lost because my... they don't want to lose their jobs, even though I don't think they get paid. No, but I mean wrong. everybody who's incompetent, like you know, you call some company and go, "Why did it take you so long to answer?" Well, you know, COVID. He he also played <laughs> played the rabbi on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Was he? In, in 2005. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. He did, as a matter of fact. Um, well, he's getting all those, all those residuals and stuff, you know, so he can, he can survive. That's fun. Yeah. I just got through watching a five-hour documentary on, on SAG-AFTRA. On SAG, actually, on the history of SAG. Forget the fourth episode, Shecky. Okay. The first three are terrific. The fourth one is just all about, you know, uh, strikes and negotiations and things like that. You know. No, I've been watching the Comedy Store documentary. Oh well, that, so that's very good. It's very good. Yeah. It's on Showtime. Yeah. And, um, um, but but I think you would really like that SAG that uh, SAG documentary. It's really very good. I didn't know Eddie Cantor was the first uh, president of SAG. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there was another guy who started it who was like the chairman or something, but the first actor. It was like president. Clint Mowbray or one of those other. Yeah, but then, the then, actor. then it was uh, Eddie Cantor. Mm -hmm. And among the illuminaries that were the presidents of SAG were Ronald Reagan. He practiced being president on SAG. And. Um, uh, Charlton Heston. Seven years Charlton Heston was president of that. Yeah. So Eddie Cantor began the March of Dimes. Did he? he no did, one remembers didn't. either. Before Jerry Lewis? No, Jerry Lewis was muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, you know, get your diseases right, will you please? <laughs> well, who's the black actor who now is going to do the March of Dimes, muscular dystrophy telethon? Mike Pence. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, what's Kevin's last name? I can't Kevin think. Hart? Kevin Hart. Really? Oh. He's going to be doing it on mm. Zoom, Maybe. Facebook, whatever. You know. Oh. Really? Well, I always enjoyed the Labor Day telethon. Yeah. Sorry to You'll say. never walk alone. Right? Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
and you're he's saying it to me. The better one was the one for um actually must um the other one. The one that Dennis James used to host in New York. Oh, oh look at us, we're walking. Yes. Look at us, yeah. we're cerebral <laughs> palsy. Cerebral palsy. And then at nine o'clock on Sunday morning, they were bringing this woman, I think her name is Catherine Coleman or something, who had, you know, the disease and could barely talk, and she would host a um church service. Well, wait a minute. Who was the host of who was the host of cerebral palsy? It was Dennis James. It was Dennis James yeah. and um one of the singer um the, the day the day I decided I was never gonna give another penny to cerebral palsy. <laughs> was was when they brought the kids out to the song and had them with certain palsy, embraces, dancing, and falling over while oh, they were God. dancing. And I'm going, I... you know something? You should treat these kids with dignity, not as a prop. And I, we, I, need, I, we need money. Oh, so we'll just bring I, them in. I just found Jerry Lewis never did that. I mean, he'd show the kids, but he would never put them in a position where they looked awkward or whatever, you know? Yeah. Look but, at us. We're walking. Look at us. We're talking. Yeah. We never walked and talked before. Was that how the song <laughs> went? Look at us. We're dancing. <laughs> that. Look at us. We're prancing. And then he falls over. Of course he's going to fall over. You don't dance with braces on your legs. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't dance when you're in an iron lung. <laughs> no. Sorry. And every three hours they bring it back out for another round. <laughs> oh, they bring them out for another round. Yeah. So I never. Where the phones also, would start ringing. Yeah. Uh, also, that would always be, it was more like a New York. I, I will finish I off here by telling you a story that happened in San Francisco. I, I refuse to do the cerebral palsy telethon because of what I just said. But in San Francisco, I was asked to do it. And I said, I'm sorry, I just don't do the cerebral palsy. I do one a year, I do muscular dystrophy because I like where their money goes and the amount of money mm -hmm. that goes to it and so on. I check those things out. And I said, but cerebral palsy, yeah, you know, they go, oh, please. It's a whole new cerebral palsy. <laughs> <laughs> a better one. So I said, okay, where do I show up? So I show up and they, first of all, they give us a speech. And the speech is, when you go on, never refer to them as handicapped. They're handicapable. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I went, that is terrible. So did you call him? Mean, I have cerebral palsy. Don't, you know, sh put shine on me by calling me handy capable. <laughs> I, but then I get up and I, there was a guy by the name of, um, of you, Romney. Uh, he belonged to a thing called the uh, hog farm. And he was known as, um, he had a, he had a, a a funny name they gave him. I'm trying to remember it now. And uh, he he was there, right? And so I, he's where he's wearing his clown makeup, okay? And he's answering the phones. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, uh, what, uh, Wowie Zowie. What was the name he used? Uh, boy, I'm trying to remember it now. Uh, too bad I don't have a chat line here. Somebody would remind me. Um, but anyway, so I'm, I'm doing this thing where I go and yeah, I'm reading the teleprompter and it says, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, we're doing a new kind of cerebral palsy telethon here. And then I, without realizing it, point to Hugh Romney in his clown makeup and say, ladies and gentlemen, this is the new face of cerebral palsy. <laughs> yeah. Enough clowning. Yeah, enough of them. Hey, listen, we've done an hour here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What a, nice, is the time what a nice hour this is. I if I could do this every night, but then if I did it every night, it'd be No Tony. If we if we did this every day, eventually some nasty people would wind up in here. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, but it's great to have you people here. Shecky, great. great to see you. Charlie, always great to see you. Uh, Andrew Deutsch, uh, love you in your boardroom. Boy, it really <laughs> makes you look important. Yes. Oh, wait a minute, you just blurred. Uh, uh, 
Uh, Jeff Stein, thank you. Thank you to Len, and thank you to whoever that broad is in the bottom of the picture. <laughs> I'm at the top left. You know, the you're bottom. Good looking, James. On, on, online, you're at the bottom. <laughs> oh. You're a bottom, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll say goodbye to the audience as well, and uh, thank them for all joining, and hopefully you'll be here for next week. Bye. Thank Bye. You, Bye. 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 See you later, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>